To create robust parametric models, it is crucial to use master sketches to drive features. In this video, I would like to recommend what I think is the best way of executing master sketches so that you don't have to face the nightmare of models crashing on you. First, let's take a look at the feature tree of a completed model that was done using master sketches. All the sketches have been created on the front plane, and they stay at the top of the tree. As you can see, these sketches do not get consumed into the features. As we go further into the video, it will become clear why this is the case. Let's go to an unfinished model to see how we can make use of these sketches to drive multi-layered features that extrude from different planes. Here is the same model where the solid features have not yet been created. To emphasize, I have prepared the sketches all on the front plane. Typically, while doing an extruded boss base, you will pick on a particular sketch and extrude from that sketch. This causes the sketch to be absorbed into the feature. As you create more features and the feature tree gets longer, the sketches are moved further and further down. For complex models, locating the exact sketch to make changes can be cumbersome. Even if you switch to a flat tree view, the sketches still remain at the bottom. Let's delete the features. In order to make the master sketches stay at the top of the tree, we will make use of derived sketches. Control select the front plane and the base sketch. Go to the command search bar and search for insert derived sketch. Upon insertion, you are immediately brought into the sketch mode with a copy of the base sketch. Now, the only action that you can take in this mode is to constrain the sketch as a whole. You will not be able to dimension individual entities. This allows for a reliable way of copying sketches without making any inadvertent changes to the original sketch. To fully define this sketch, set up coincidence relations between two points on this copied sketch and the corresponding points on the original sketch. Pick on a derived sketch and make an extrusion. For the next cylinder feature, you will typically pick on the surface of the new extrusion and start performing sketches. The problem with this workflow is that you will be creating a dependency for the sketch. The sketch is now a child with respect to the face of the new extrusion. If we continue with this workflow, we will be creating a chain of dependencies down the line which often results in regeneration failures when things get changed. So once again, we will make use of derived sketches. This time, pick the face and the cylinder sketch and go to insert derived sketch. Constrain the sketch with two points. Pick on a derived sketch and make an extrusion. For the last feature, we will pick on the face of the cylinder and the hexagonal sketch and insert derived sketch. We will make this an extruded cut up to next. The power of this workflow is most apparent when we need to make changes to the master sketches. First of all, since the sketches are all at the top and not consumed into features, we can easily access them. We can go into our sketches, make a change to the dimension, or even add entities and the changes will get propagated into the derived sketches and into the features. If we wish, we can group all the sketches into one folder. Whenever there's a need to create a new master sketch, you can rewind the feature tree to add in this new sketch. 
Alright, give this workflow a try and let me know what you think in the comments below. I will see you in the next video.